I see that both teams are back on the ice now, ready for the start of the third period. And uh, I want to thank both uh, John McClellan and uh, Marcel Pelche for being my guests on Prism in between the second and third period. And for their appearance tonight, they're going to get a lovely gift from the English leather people and from the Manor Sax Slacks people. I get the bridge caught a little bit, I'll tell you, John. And uh, so right now, I'll switch it back up to Hugh Gannon up in our booth and for the start of the third period. Huey? Watson gets to the red line, throws it to Clark onside. Leach can't get it, but the back checking Earl Thompson intercepts. Out to Bob Daly. Everybody onside. Spots Leach. Has to be Turnbull to it. Over skates. Daly keeps it in. Wrist shot. No, he throws it into the corner to Clark. Nobody looking for the puck. Clark tries to backhand it. Billy Barber takes it away. Daly is free, so is Leach. But a poke check kept in nicely by Jimmy Watson. Goes to Barber, but it's Thompson freeing for Philadelphia. Daly with a delayed offside coming up here. Somings tries to get it to Thompson, poked away nicely by Barber. Leach is free on the right wing, takes it over the line, tries to poke it away. Palmatier throws it into the corner. Barber gets it, bounces the puck down, but Turnbull is there, so is Bill Barber. Clark puts his stick underneath, but Kenny would be happy with a faceoff. Intercepted by Clark to Reggie Leach, backhands it through the slot, and Jimmy Watson couldn't get a stick down. Flyers continue the pressure, keep it in the leaf zone, but here comes George Ferguson. Two on two, he goes wing to wing to Earl Thompson. Fakes the shot. Daly throws it in on goaltender Wayne Stevenson, and it's Daly intercepting in turn for Philadelphia. Hard off the board to Ross Lonsbury, beats Carlisle to it, who almost trips. Headman's it to Clark. Clark tries to come back and gives it away to George Ferguson. Ferguson moves nicely around Moose DuPont, but as Rick LaPointe, the beat stood up nicely. Dornhofer back checking for Philadelphia, but it was the Leafs getting it in on goaltender Wayne Stevenson. DuPont goes wing to wing to Rick LaPointe, LaPointe with Lonsbury trailing. Tries to move around Somming and does. Or makes that Mike Pellick to Lonsbury. Looks for McLeish in the crease. McLeish comes, but so does Carlisle. Comes free to McLeish, and it's Lanny McDonald on the right wing. Tries to go off the boards. Nobody in particular. Icing waved off as the puck, even though it does go over the line, is touched up by Gary Dornhofer. Dornhofer stick handling for Philadelphia to Rick McLeish. Pulls it past. Oh, a penalty coming up here against Tiger Williams on a good hip check. Flyers will have the manpower advantage over the line. Touched up back in the leaf zone. And the call is against Tiger Williams. And the call is holding you, but uh, if anything he's going to call, it would have to be tripping because he just tried to reach. Williams off for holding. Here comes the penalty. Right here. See Rick going right here. He, he, and for holding, it would be uh, he trying to knock the puck away from the clutch. It was more of a trip rather than a hold if it was called for anything. Dornhofer can't get the stick down, and the Leafs, Randy Carlisle, sends it behind the Leafs player bench, and the faceoff will be in Toronto zone, but sounds like an ad for a men's store. Okay, it's Randy Carlisle sending it the length of the ice, and Stevenson throws it out for Bob Clark. He'll start the rush with 145 and counting. Daryl Sittler penalty killing along with Lanny McDonald. Bob Clark tries to stick handle around Sittler, takes it over the line, looks for a breaking McLeish, goes wing to wing to Gary Dornhofer. Takes it in deep, backhands it in front, knocked down by Carlisle, and Bladen can't keep it in the leaf zone. Stevenson headmans it to Bob Clark. Off for Rick McLeish with Bladen and Dornhofer trailing. Tries to move it by Pellick, and Dornhofer can't keep it in. Good play by Bladen to get it to Dornhofer. Over the line, tries to move around a check by Pellick, kicks it free from him. McLeish is free in the slot, goes hard off the board to Bob Clark. The Flyers tried and widen out. McLeish is free. Slap shot, knocked down, and away comes Daryl Sittler one on one with Tom Bladen. Philadelphia had three men all camped behind the net there on a power play advantage with only two in front. And believe me, that's pretty tough to get one in front there, or get a goal, or a good shot, or a good opportunity when you have three men behind the goal. Both checked away, and once again, Bob, we talked about throwing the puck in. 50 seconds to go. Let's see if Leach can get the Flyers started. On comes Kendrachuk and Lonsbury. 40-footer into the midsection of Palmateri hangs on. Flyers very inept at getting the power play going tonight. They just can't seem to get a, any good opportunities. They've only had one shot on goal so far in this opportunity, and you, in order to score on a power play, you have to get a lot of shots. And of course, we can't take anything away from the Leafs. They're keeping them at bay. They're playing the box excellently, and they're letting Mike Palmatier see most of the shots that are coming his way. Here comes Reggie Leach to get it back to Moose DuPont. Rolling puck, drops it off for Leach. Turn around. Oh, right through the slot. In comes Big Bob Daly. Throws it into Reggie Leach. Has to knock it down. Knocked down beautifully by a sprawling Boreas Somming. Ferguson goes too hard for Earl Thompson. Daly headmans the puck to Lonsbury into the leaf zone. Turnbull there. Can't find the handle. Kendra Chuck tries to beat, and Daly gets it for Philadelphia. Poked away by Boreas Salming. 
The Leafs could have broken out that time two on one. 14 seconds to go on the manpower advantage for Philadelphia. Leach with a puck for Philadelphia. Throws it into the corner. Kinderchuk hustling for Philadelphia with Leach in front. Can he beat Boya Salming to the puck? DuPont can't keep it in the zone. Williams will be out in one second. This will be icing, or it should be. No, it's not. No, I think, he got, uh, I think the puck crossed the goal line before Williams came out of the penalty box. Joe Watson gets to the red line, throws it into the zone as it is Bob Neely. Loves the rolling puck. Kinderchuk tries to dig it free. Met there by Pellick. Neely goes off the board. Poutet tries to beat Seleski to it. Joe Watson threw a screen. Bounces off Bob Kelly. Kinderchuk has Seleski free. Diving is Randy Carlisle. Kinderchuk for Philadelphia as Jimmy Watson breaks. Can he spot him? Pump home. Missed. Seleski tries to rebound it. Kelly tries to pick it out, and Palmatier hangs on. An excellent opportunity there for Jimmy Watson, and when he got the pass there, of course, it was on his backhand, and he tried to redirect the pass into the net, but it went wide, and coming around behind the net, Palmatier just grabbed right onto it. As we see the final now just in from Boston, Boston 6, Los Angeles 2, and that series will revert back to the West Coast City next Saturday night. 15.32 left in the third period, and it's still a lot of time, but it's slowly dwindling away on the part of the Flyers. Paul Holmgren will center a line of Bob Kelly and Don Seleski. Here's, the, Here's the play right here, when, and Jimmy Watson had a good chance of redirecting it, but he had to take the pass on his back end. Here it is, comes out again, and coming right there, Mike Palmatier poke checking the puck off the Flyer defenseman and hanging on for the faceoff. Intercepted by Boutet, he slaps it the length of the ice as goaltender Stevenson directs it off to Joe Watson. In comes Stan Weir, and it's Jimmy Watson with the puck for Philadelphia. Headman's at the Paul Holmgren, fans on it. Kelly is on side into the leaf zone. Palmatier drops it off for Randy Carlisle. Around the boards for Boutet, and it is Stan Weir getting there first offside, face off at the red dot neutral ice. Time ticking away, 15.08 to go in the final period. Philadelphia trailing 4-1. In Wednesday night's game. Boria Salming, the Ian Turnbull, the Tiger Williams, knocked down by Tom Bladen. Looks for a breaking Bob Kelly. He overskates, but here comes Paul Holmgren for Philadelphia. Stick handles over the line nicely. Rich shot coming up. And Palmatier dives out to hang on. That's what I've said earlier. You know, Palmatier, here's the shot right here. He takes it high off the shoulder, and it bounds out in front of him. He just wisely pounces on the puck and forces the face off. Not giving the Flyers anything to get out around there. No loose pucks at all for them to pounce on. And if there are a loose puck around there, the defense Toronto defense is wisely clearing it and keeping Philadelphia forwards away from it. They're playing a strong defensive game in their zone. Harvey Bennett will take the draw with George Ferguson. Moose Dupont. And out comes Rick LaPointe off the board for Moose Dupont offside. Thornhofer was taken down in front of the Leafs net. Dupont is joined with uh, Pat Boutet and friends on the Toronto bench. I think when uh, Moose, uh, when Ferguson and Bennett to take the draw, back into the leaf zone. Salming hustles in as Palmatier directs it to Boria Salming. Flyers sending three forwards in, kept in by LaPointe, shot on goal, knocked down, backhander coming up by Lonsbury, but it goes into the corner. Bennett controls, tries to hit Rick LaPointe, backhand, Dornhofer can't find the handle. It is Harvey Bennett for Philadelphia, takes it wide, throws it in front, fanning on it was Rick LaPointe, and he is tripped up. Flyers can't buy a break there. Gary Dornhofer, back checking for Philadelphia, comes away with the puck. With Harvey Bennett trailing two on two. Tries to move around, and it's Bennett shot. Whoa, whistled wide. Got wood on it. And it is McKenney backhanding it to a breaking George Ferguson. DuPont has to wait till Dornhofer gets onside. Lonsbury offside Philadelphia. A little bit too quick was Roscoe trying to break through on the right side there. And they had the good idea, though. There is Reggie Leach hustling for the puck, but it's poked away nicely by either Pellick or Neely. Daly backhands it for Jimmy Watson. Quickly out of the Philadelphia zone. Looks for breaking Bob Clark. Knocked down. Daly can't find the handle. Has to come back to the Philadelphia zone. Circles away, and the Flyers starting a play wide open. Down by three, Bob. They have to do something, though, Hugh. They're down by three goals. You have to really open up offensively. Barber around Pellick. Throws it in on Palmatier. Pellick in turn return for Neely. And he sends it the length of the ice. The puck will die. Icing is waved off already by linesman John D'Amico. Jimmy Watson on the stick of Billy Barber. It's a hot pass. And in turn, Stan Weir intercepting. In turn by Barber, but poked away by Weir. Pellick hustling for the puck. 
Clark try to read it, knocked it down to Bob Daly. Tries to beat Myers to the play. Leach looking for a bouncing puck, and in turn it's Randy Carlisle. In comes Bill Barber, in comes Stan Weir. Reggie Leach ties it up against the boards, and finally it is Myers who lost his whip. Tied at 2-2. Borea Salming hard off the glass. Bladen will keep it in for Philadelphia, but poked away nicely by Tiger Williams. Paul Holmgren tries to hit Tom Bladen. But not much of a goal attempt at that. Borea Salming goes wing to wing to Ian Turnbull, almost intercepted by Oris Kendrachuk. McLeish even fans on the puck and has to wait for Joe Watson to find the handle to McLeish off his skate and Bladen flips it into the Toronto zone. Lanny McDonald knocks down the puck. Bladen knocks it down for Philadelphia. Wrist shot partially deflected by Borja Salming. Kendrachuk turnaround. Controls McLeish is free in the front. Backhanded. Getting a piece of it may have been Lanny McDonald. Toronto doing a good job of screening, of uh, clearing that puck when it's coming through there. And of course, the Flyers having a tough time getting their shots through on the point. And they're camped on Mike Palmatier's doorstep. And uh, the youngster is really holding his, his uh, cool, so to speak, uh, to keep concentrating on that puck. And believe me, he's doing an excellent job of that tonight. Ross Lonsbury centering a line of Don Zaleski and Bob Kelly. DuPont throws it in front. Palmatier may not have seen that one, but it went wide. Ferguson to make that Thompson and Rick LaPointe. In comes Don Seleski, and finally we have a little skirmish there, but uh, nothing developing. As Pellick uh, spun away from Seleski. That's one thing the Flyers don't need now with only 11 minutes left in the game is, is penalties, and I know the tempers are going to start to fly because of the frustration of being behind here at home, but uh, they're going to have to last 11 minutes to stay on the ice and try to get some goals. Kelly digs it away from Pellick. In comes Ross Lonsbury. Down goes the Hound. Kelly tries to dig it free. Bob, oh, the puck did come free, and Myers blew the play dead. Tough job. Probably lost sight of it, decided face off, and it was, uh, it was a tough time. Carlisle and Holmgren go for the puck. Seleski tries to beat Thompson to it. Rick LaPointe looks for Bob Kelly, and in turn, it's intercepted nicely by George Ferguson. Rick LaPointe controls for Philadelphia. Backhands it to Don Seleski. Throws it in on Mike Palmatier. Drops it off for Randy Carlisle. Flyers have three forwards in the zone. Seleski intercepts. Wrist shot. Oh, it took a dying Mallard kind of flop there. Kept in by DuPont. Wrist shot. Knocked off the body of Bob Kelly. Hustles into the face-off circle. Looks for Holmgren in front. The Rick LaPointe who has to go to the backhand off his skate. Turn around. Sees Le DuPont free at the left point. Up in the air. There's Holmgren. Flailing. Advancing the puck, I assume, with the hand. Good call by Bob Myers. At the blue line. and Goal scorers for Philadelphia in the two-game series. McLeish, Bob Daly, and tonight Billy Barber. Palmatier guides the puck to Ian Turnbull around the board. Barber tries to get it, and it's Jimmy Watson. Oh, he hit Borja Salming right in the face. Fortunately, he was only stunned. Uh, I think he got him uh, wow. a lot on the helmet, thank goodness, because uh, Ooh. that puck really took off in a hurry, and I think he is only stunned, and no permanent damage would be resolved. But they can't afford to lose that number 21 for them because he is uh, an excellent hockey player in the backbone of the defense, along with number two, Ian Turnbull. There's where a helmet came in and helped him out completely. He got it mostly on the side of the head there, but... I think you have a sore head for the next day or two. Or a cheekbone for them. <laughs> uh, I tell you what, the way... Uh, the ice uh, seen that the great star for Toronto is not injured permanently. Clark and Sittler to take the draw. And waved out. We have encroaching... Uh, no, we don't. We just have a wave out of Sittler and McDonald to take the draw. Right-handed stick against the left-handed stick. Advantage certainly to Bob Clark here. Gets it back to Jimmy Watson. Winds up. Knocked down by Lanny McDonald, who was stunned on that one. Bob Daly has to wait till Bob Clark gets on side. Leaches free on the right wing. Over the line. Throws the shot. Partially deflected. Palmatier hangs on. McDonald. Uh, I think when he blocked that ooh. shot, you know, the, even though the players wear a lot of protective covering, you know, there's a lot of gaps in there, and especially when you have to go down and... Uh, maybe the pads will slide or shift on you, and that could have been what happened there. A shot got through in an unprotected part of his body, and believe me, that hurts. Larkin Sittler to take the draw. 10.39 to go in the final period. The Flyers down by a whopping three goals to the tight-checking Toronto Maple Leafs. Dropped, and Sittler wins the draw off the dasher boards for Ian Turnbull, who pulls up behind Mott Palmatier. 
the Leafs try to come out and send away Tiger Williams, who has it with Lanny McDonald over the line. McDonald breaking for the goal now, too far from him. Back checking Bill Barber. And it's McDonald spun around by Jimmy Watson. Clark has the puck for Philadelphia. Comes right up the slot, drops it off for Reggie Leach. He has Ian Turnbull to beat. Moves it by Turnbull, knocked down, and offside the call. And the puck apparently did not go over the blue line, and no question about that one. No, that's the time again. That blue line's about uh, eight to nine inches wide, and it has to go completely over the blue line before it is considered inside the offensive zone. On that time, it just went halfway onto the blue line. Here's a shot of the flyer bench. Uh, some concerned, concerned faces on that bench, and rightfully so. Down three goals, only 10 minutes left in the game. Stan Weir gets it back to Mike Pellick. Bladen can't keep it in as it was a slow whistle, but obviously Tom was over that blue line. Mike Palmatier turning aside 25 of 26 flyer shots on goal. Wayne Stevenson started the third period, and uh, the Leafs have had but one shot on goal. We're midway through the final period. And that wasn't much of a scoring attempt either. Tom Bladen circles away from the forechecking of Pat Boutet, drops it off for fellow defenseman Joe Watson as the Leafs have four people from the red line back. Pumps it into the corner, going for it for Bob Neely. In comes Gary Dornhofer. Tries to skate away from Dornhofer right under the stick of Stan Weir. Here come the Leafs, three on three. Backhands it for defenseman Mike Pellick. Goes to Tom Bladen. In comes winger Neely. Lonsbury for Philadelphia. To Gary Dornhofer into the Leafs zone. Palmatier off the boards. Joe Watson has to hustle for Philadelphia. And Boutet sends it the length of the ice. This will be icing when it's touched by Bladen. We have nine minutes and 22 seconds to go. And now it develops here with half the period to go. And there is no icing on this as Wayne Stevenson leaves it for Moose DuPont. Jim McKenney for checking deep for the Leafs. Here's Bob Kelly. He has O. Kinderchuk free in the left wing. Best effort so far for Kinderchuk. Comes in deep. Looks for the backhand, throws it off the dasher boards for Don Seleski. Tries to get it back to Rick LaPointe, who is also deep. Circles away from the check of McKenney. Pushes down Thompson, and it is thrown back into the Philadelphia zone. The puck will die. Icing is waved off again. Under nine minutes to go on the final period. DuPont to Don Seleski, but it goes to Rick LaPointe instead. In turn, back to O. Kinderchuk. Tries to throw it into the corner offside as the puck was held up on the blue line and Seleski was three feet inside that line. You know, if you were to pick a number one star tonight, I would have to go with number 29 and in between that four by six cage of Toronto, Mike Palmatier. Time and time again, he stopped Flyers on good scoring opportunities, not only on their first shot, but on controlling his rebounds. And I, I would have to say that he is to be the number one star tonight for Toronto. Would you say I was prejudiced being an ex-goaltender? Yeah, you know, you always come up that way anyway. Oh. <laughs> Jimmy Watson back deep for Philadelphia. They have eight minutes to go, and uh, they are down by three and showing no signs of coming out of the doldrums. Lanny McDonald down. In comes Harvey Bennett. Throws it into the leaf zone, and that's Mike Kellick with the puck. Can't find the handle. Goes hard off the boards to Tiger Williams. Jimmy Watson comes in. The puck is into the seats. We'll have a face-off in the Terry Cup, uh, you know, well, a friend of mine once explained it to me, and I'll get into it as Jimmy Watson shoots in on Palmatier. Whistles wide. Joe Watson in turn throws it in front. Nobody can get a stick down. Tiger Williams has it. In comes Jimmy Watson. Paul Holmgren tries to hit Harvey Too Tall Bennett. Can't get a stick down. Holmgren tries to ride off Daryl Sittler, and it's Jimmy Watson for Philadelphia. Off the dasher boards, intercepted in turn by Mike Pellick. Throws it in the Philadelphia zone where it's Joe Watson for the Flyers. Looks for a breaking Bob Clark. Stick handling, get to the red line. Knocked down nicely by Pellick. Oh, the Flyers had a chance then, but it was knocked back over the line. And the Leafs are putting five Flyers of now Bob Daly on the left wing. Certainly the off wing for him. Moose DuPont from Philadelphia skates away from Bob Neely, who scored the Leafs' first goal and starts the rush. Gets to the red line. Throws it into the Leafs' zone. Leaches in front. Backhand in front. Knocked down by Bob Daly. Leaches tripped up and hanging on to this Palmatier. Good play by Ian Turnbull. There's a shot of Palmatier and number 21, Bory Salmi. Both played a key part in the Toronto victory on Monday and playing a key part here in the in this 4-1 uh, Toronto lead here tonight. Leach moves over to the left wing. Daly gets to the right wing. Knocked down by Salmi. Out to Neely. Headmans it for Pat Boutet. And he throws an easy shot in on goaltender Wayne Stevenson, who drops it off for Tom Blayton. 
Skates away from Neely. Headman's at the Billy Barber. Looks for Big Bob Daly on the left wing. Over the line. Good stick handling by Barber. Closes. Wrist shot. Hit the pipe. Daly coming up the backhand. Quick wrist shot in on goaltender Palmatier. Knocks it to Stan Weir. Daly tries to get a stick on it. Weir spun around by Reggie Leach. Good hustle by the Flyers at the moment. In turn to Boutet who clears. Back to neutral life. Under seven minutes to go. Head manning the puck. Tom Blayton to Reggie Leach. Throws it into the zone as Blayton goes off. Philadelphia all on side. Jimmy Watson tries to beat Somming to the puck. Bob Daly intercepts, knocked down by McKinney. Out to Rick LaPointe. LaPointe looks for breaking Ross Lonsbury. Onside, Philadelphia. In on Palmatier, hangs on. Red light is going on mysteriously. Why, we don't know. Maybe it's a harbinger of things to come for Philadelphia. Here comes Jim McKinney. Shot in on Stevenson, knocks it down, and it goes in turn to Rick LaPointe. That could have been a dangerous one right there. That was good wood on that shot, and Stevenson had to be quick to pick it up. In on Palmatier, and he'll hang on. Six shots this period by Philadelphia. Not much of an offensive thrust for a team that's down three goals. Toronto's had but two, and which is no surprising for a team that's playing very defensively and protecting a three-goal lead. That red light went on, and as you see Red Cully here uh, talking to linesman John D'Amico, uh, making sure that there was no malfunction on the part of the equipment, and uh, possibly it was uh, just a mental lapse on the part of the goal judge. And you'll have to, we might say here, Hugh, that uh, the goal judges and the uh, uh, minor officials are all from uh, different cities in the league. They do not use the same ones in uh, playoff action, like the Philadelphia goal judges will throughout the year would not be used here in Philadelphia during the playoffs. They would be used in other cities. If I'm not mistaken, the minor officials, Bob, are from uh, Washington. I talked to one of the fellows, uh, the uh, official scorer. Two punch shot high and off the glass. Rick LaPointe has to go to the backhand, finally to the forehand, and there is Mike Pellick looking for the handle and tries to get it out to Ferguson. Knocked down by the Flyers and then leaves. Lonsbury has to wait till everybody's on side. Six minutes to go. That goes into the seats. Face off to go and offside the call. Dornhofer was four, two games to none lead going to Jimmy Watson. He drops it off for Bob Daly. Daly looks for breaking Oak Kindrachuk on side. Throws it in front. And it was a good diving play by Borea Salming. Barber tries to keep it in the zone. Jumps over Jimmy Watson's stick. Poked away to George Ferguson. Off to McKinney. Oh, McKinney closes shot. Went wide. Hit the goal post, I think, on that one. Huey had him out of his mercy and just went up over uh, Stevenson's shoulder there and hit the goal post. Looks like he had Earl Thompson offside by about 12 feet. Salming gloves it and then frees it back off the boards. Face off. Rather, never made the boards off and into the seats, face off in the leaf zone. So that uh, roar that came up prematurely here. Here as we see the shot here, that Jim McKinney going on the 2-1 up over Stevenson shot, and I guess you're Hit right. the pipe. Jim, right Hit off the pipe. the pipe. The way it went. The goaltender's best friend, the post. Not much to talk about for Philadelphia fans. We do hope, uh, nonetheless, you're still enjoying the broadcast. We have another final in here. Montreal has defeated St. Louis by the tune of three to nothing. Well, all three are final. And we're only under three minutes here from the final. Bob Kelly tried to be Palmatier to it. Seleski right there for Philadelphia, along with Tiger Williams to Bob Kelly. On top of him is Mike Pellick. Throws it out in front, but Sittler is there for the Leafs. Here comes Toronto, three on three. Sittler... In on goaltender Wayne Stevenson. Off his stick nonchalantly for Moose DuPont. Almost intercepted by McDonald. Panning on it was Rick LaPointe. Spinning around into the Philadelphia zone. The Leafs have this one all wrapped up. But Moose DuPont not quitting for Philadelphia. Skates to the red line. Lifts it into the corner. Foot races on Carlisle. Backs into the corner. Bob Kelly there. Ridden off. Darrell Sittler with Moose DuPont. 
Oh, elbows and sticks there a little high. Sittler not happy with the elbow, and uh, this will be icing against Philadelphia. Two minutes and, or rather, against the Leafs, 2.04 to go. Face off back in the Toronto zone. Toronto at home is going to stand up for at least uh, one of the games in Toronto, and uh, he can get life, get back on these winning ways, and get back Tom here Blake. and start winning their games in the spectrum. Bouncing puck, Salmon gloves it. Leaves it go. Goes into the corner to Ross Lonsbury. Tries to back away from Stan Weir. Controls, closes, gets it to Bob Clark. There's Stan Weir back to Dornhofer. And finally, it is Neely trying to free it. Dornhofer right there and coming away with the puck is Neely. Kept in nicely by Tom Blade. And Lonsbury spots Clark in the slot. Diving with a C. Boria Salming. And here come the Leafs two on two. Stan Weir with Boutet trailing. The Boutet tries to move around Tom Blade. Pokes it into the corner. There's Bob Clark for Philadelphia. Stick handles around the check of Stan Weir. Off to Gary Dornhofer. Tries to move around Neely and does. Boria Salming there tries to take Dornhofer out of the play. Clark goes back to the pipe, but it's Tom Bladen's shot. Partially deflected by the skate of Stan Weir. 70 seconds to go in tonight's game. Joe Watson into the leaf zone. Knocked out by Salming. He's skating three on two, winds up in on goaltender Wayne Stevenson, makes the pad save, off to Bob Daly. Boutet sends it back into the Philadelphia zone. Stevenson guides it to Joe Watson. Backhanded, kept in the Philadelphia zone, in turn intercepted by Billy Barber. Barber tries a stick handle pass to Ferguson. The Paul Holmgren throws it into the corner. Palmateer drops it off for Jim McKenney. In comes Billy Barber, and he sends it the length of the ice, knocked down by Bob Daly. Moves around the check of George Ferguson. Takes it over the line. Everybody onside. In on goaltender Palmatier. Hustling forward is Daly. Gets it off to Bill Barber. Out in front. Holmgren shot. Oh, getting a piece of it. Goaltender Mike Palmatier. Here comes Harvey Bennett looking for a lot of people in front, including Bob Daly around the boards. Moves to Connor. Make that Jimmy Watson. Throws it in front. Bill Barber has the puck for Philadelphia. Turns around. Partially deflected and comes free to George Ferguson. Gets it off to McKenney with five seconds to go in tonight's game. He'll throw it into the corner. And school is out as the Toronto Maple Leafs have defeated the Philadelphia Flyers by an impressive 4-1 tally. And you see the entire team flanked around goaltender Mike Palmatier as he turned aside 27 of 28 Philadelphia shots on goal. The Leafs pumping home four on 20 shots getting four goals on 15 attempts against Bernie Perrant, five in the final stanza against goaltender Wayne Stevenson. We only had one notation in that final period, a holding penalty, questionable at best against Tiger Williams with 1.55 to go in the game that uh, could have uh, set the tempo for Philadelphia as we see the winning Toronto Maple Leafs coming through their dressing area along with Leafs general manager Jim Gregory congratulating Toronto winning two straight. Flyers ending up uh, with, uh, I have uh, unofficially seven in the final period for five for Toronto. And the MAV three stars for tonight's game, Boria Salming, star number three, Ian Turnbull, star number two, and a nice star, I would assume, Mike Palmatier, as our good friend Bob Taylor indicated, uh, he played an exceptional game. Trying to pick up on uh, earlier statistics since we didn't have anything to talk about in the third period except the Flyers uh, couldn't get it going. I think the key to the game was the fact that Philadelphia trailed 2-0 after one period of play and uh, put a lot of pressure on in the first 30 seconds, but then quickly the Leafs broke out with Daryl Sittler and Tiger Williams, and Williams about a stride and a half over the blue line and molded a blister on Bernie Perrant 37 seconds into the middle period, and that gave Toronto a 3-0 lead. Barber cut the margin to 3-1, about the six-minute mark, and then uh, at the 15-minute mark, Daryl Sittler intercepting a clearing pass or a slow breakout by Philadelphia, faked the slap shot using Joe Watson as a screen, wristed it to the glove side of goaltender Bernie Perrant, and that was the fourth goal, and that was the difference in the game, as I thought at that time Philadelphia had been applying enough pressure. They were only down by two goals and could have gotten back into the game. But the way the Leafs have checked these two games, certainly not the Flyers that ended the season on that 
winning road trip and then winning a couple of games, uh, especially coming from behind in Toronto in a game that really didn't mean anything uh, for Philadelphia, but meant a heck of a lot for the Atlanta Flames that would have given them home ice advantage. Philadelphia did come back to tie that one, and uh, the game in L.A., the game in Vancouver with goaltender pulled and Reggie Leach pumping one home, but I guess really when you think about it, Philadelphia with Bob Clark for the second straight game not getting a single point has to be the difference in uh, the Flyers attempt to uh, get into the semifinal series. Uh, Bob Clark did not have a single shot on goal in the first game. Uh, in period number one tonight he had one shot on goal and in the second period did not have a shot on goal. I don't know what the official statistics are as far as the third period is concerned but five periods of play and the team leader uh, Bob Clark did not have an official shot on goal against these Toronto Maple Leafs. The difference uh, we indicated, well, at least I thought anyway, was uh, Tiger Williams' goal, Phil Barber uh, having two assists the other evening, uh, getting a goal tonight, and Bob Daly, who had a goal the other evening, getting an assist on Bill Barber's goal. Two unassisted goals for Toronto tonight, Stan Weir and Daryl Sittler. Both goals in the first period for Atlanta. Bob Neely on the very first shot of the game with uh, Harvey Bennett off for high sticking at the 602 mark. Kept one on the ice past Bernie Perrant, and that gave the Leafs a 1-0 lead at the 655 mark. And then at the 1115 mark, Stan Weir coming down on essentially a two-on-one or three-on-two. Kept wide by Tom Bladen, but uh, maybe Bernie Perrant wasn't prepared for the shot. Stan Weir got his first goal in this series, his second in the Stanley Cup series so far this year. Tiger Williams and Daryl Sittler rounding out the scoring for Toronto, Bill Barber for Philadelphia. And hopefully our friend uh, Bob Taylor will be down uh, at our Prism location for his guest. I don't know who it is, but once again, the color analyst, it will be Bob Taylor. And I do believe one of the outstanding players in the NHL, the captain of the Leafs, Daryl Sittler. Bobby? Thanks, Hugh. And, uh, of course, we're waiting the arrival of uh, Leaf Captain Daryl Sittler here to talk with us after, and, of course, after a great Toronto triumph to put them ahead two games to nothing in this series. And uh, it's going to be a long hold to toll for Philadelphia to come back uh, down by two, but it's not impossible. And uh, one would have to think that that news of Barry Ashby was the one that really put the Flyers uh, off their game tonight. Uh, I think that... Uh, it probably meant more to them um, than people realize it. And uh, being a very good friend of m Barry, myself, and, and an ex-teammate, uh, I know what it did to me. And of course, uh, I wasn't too exuberant throughout the telecast, but uh, I know what the players felt like. A game that uh, Philadelphia is going to have to improve on uh, in order to get back in this series. But Toronto's playing so well uh, defensively that uh, they might have a long throw to come back. And uh, I see that Daryl's just come in now to talk with us. And Daryl, good, thanks. Sit down here. Uh, great victory for uh, Toronto, and I guess, uh, Daryl, if somebody was to tell you that you were going to walk away from the spectrum here with uh, two games to nothing lead in this series, I think you'd probably say they were a little cracked. Well, it's hard to believe, you know. Uh, you know, uh, we, we got a young team, and we got a lot of pride in our team, you know, and uh, I don't know, this year we've had a sort of a frustrating year with injuries and everything else, and uh, it seemed when our backs were against the wall, we've come up, you know, and uh, we got a young goalie in Palm Materia who comes up with some big saves, like right at the start there on McLeish, he made a big save, we come back and scored, you know, and you need things like that. Uh, that's what Philadelphia had uh, uh, three years ago when they won the cup. They had Bernie really going and making the big saves, and it gives the team a momentum, you know. And uh, uh, it's not over yet by a long shot. I mean, we've only won two games, and it's a four-game series. And the Flyers are a great hockey club, you know. They've been in the finals the last two, three years, and uh, you know we're looking for tough things ahead yet. Daryl, I, I have to marvel on exactly, you know, that the, the how tough uh, you're playing them defensively. And and believe me, everybody says, oh, they're not playing well, but. To me, I don't think the Leafs are allowing the Flyers to play well. They're checking well. The defense are standing up the blue line. The wingers are coming back, and the Flyers are trying to make the big, the big play at the blue line rather than trying to dump it in and, and go in and forecheck. Uh, did Red Kelly come up with any different uh, strategy for the playoffs, or let's say more specifically for uh, Philadelphia? Well, the big thing is we know that that's their play that they're going to shoot it in, and we make sure we get our wingers back there with them. You know, uh, like Freddie Shiro's always said, uh, the games are won and lost in corners. You know, and uh, we try to tie them or beat them to the corners and fight for every inch of ice. And I think that uh, a lot of teams, when they lose to the Flyers, that's where they lose it in the corners. You know, they, uh, 
they maybe uh, get a little bit intimidated or you know pull up from the puck where our guys are sticking their nose in and taking a check or or whatever and uh, it's proved to be successful you know uh, we haven't given them a lot of real good shots you know and uh, we're getting great games out of Salming and Turnbull you know they're playing a lot of ice time and Randy Carlisle who's a rookie this year is playing fantastic and Mike Pellick who's only played three or four games he's clutch and grab playing playing the body and it it's been working out I think the key to the, both the games that we won though uh, we come out and we got a couple lucky breaks and scored a couple goals and uh, the Flyers uh, you know when you're down it's just a little bit uh, different you have to sort of press to get a goal you know and when you're up a couple you can maybe play more of an defensive shell you know and we were fortunate to get the goals well Hugh Gannis just uh, joined us here after coming down from downstairs and we'll shove over a little bit and uh, he can uh, move right in here but uh, I, I, is it surprising uh, to see the four defensemen playing so well and, and taking such a, uh, I know Philadelphia is such a, a physical team, I mean, not playing well, but I mean, standing up under all the physical punishment that uh, a big team like the Flyers hand out and they're on the ice uh, constantly, uh, uh, they must be getting tired. Well, a guy like Borges Selming, like to me, uh, you see a guy game in, game out, you know, and he's in fantastic shape. Uh, I watched him in the Canada Cup. He was one of the best defensemen there uh, against the Flyers last year. He was a great defenseman. And I don't know, when it seems when he has to come up with a big effort, he's always there. He, he never seems to get tired, you know. And uh, I think uh, it helps our defense a little bit, too, having our, our wingers come back and help them out. It makes it a little easier for them. But, uh, you know, when you're winning, you forget about being tired. When you're <laughs> losing, I think you get a little more tired than you, you are when you're winning. And uh, if we can keep this momentum going, then it's going to mean a lot to our team, you know. So. I know that uh, the Leafs have had trouble uh, in the last... Uh, 14, 15 games, and I know you've been asked this question a lot of times uh, at home. Uh, these, in fact, I had John McClellan on at the second period saying that uh, uh, you have had trouble at home, but, uh, you know, it, that's bound to change. Uh, home ice means a lot, and uh, you've proved it, it wrong, actually, that uh, so far in, in both playoff series, but uh, coming up this weekend, uh, going home to the Garden in Toronto uh, has to be a, a bonus for you. Do you think that the... Uh, the play of Toronto will differ any bit at home than they did it uh, here in Philadelphia? Well, we're just going to have to sort of play the same way. Uh, check, 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 you know. I think uh, sometimes at home uh, players tend to believe that they have to open it up and put on a show for their fans, you know. And, uh, and when we're on the road, we f seem to forget about that. And uh, what happens in Toronto, which happens in many buildings, when the team doesn't uh, start to play well or your goalie lets a couple weak ones in, they start to boo you like they did Bernie's night. And it's not fair to the players, you know, and you try to press a little more. And I don't know, you just don't yourselves, you know. And... Uh, you know, uh, last year when we played Philadelphia in the, f in the playoffs, uh, we created a lot of enthusiasm in Toronto. The fans got behind us, and it was a great feeling, and maybe that's why we played so well. We had them there, and, uh, you know, uh, Canadians, they want to see a Canadian team win, you know. Uh, I mean, their Flyers are all Canadians, but they're, you know, hometown people are for their hometown team, and, uh, you know, the Leafs haven't won anything for a long time, and uh, they like to see the Leafs back up there, and they get behind us. You, do you have anything to uh, ask, Daryl? You talked about the outstanding play of uh, Mike Palmatier, who was just brilliant again tonight and as you said the number one star in tonight's game well I've talked a little bit about it but uh, this year uh, when we play the Canadians he's can't come up big you know we play the Flyers in here uh, he came up big he's just a he's a sort of a cocky little guy he likes to challenge you you know and uh, uh, his background in junior uh, he won the Memorial Cup he seems to come up big in the big games in the playoffs he's he's a fighter and uh, you know, when you got him making the big saves like he did on McLeish in the first period, and it gives your team a little bit of a lift. If he lets in a weak goal, it, your team sometimes turn the other way, and the other team comes on, and he's been keeping us in there. I know you said the key key to the both games were getting out that early start. Uh, if, uh, you know, hypothetically, you go up to the, the garden and things turn around, the Flyers get on, on top first. Do you think that will change your style? I know Bobby alluded to that just a little bit. Well, it, it possibly could, you know, like, uh, you know, if you're down two or three goals, uh, you got to press a little bit to get back in there. It's no sense just checking like we did in the third period. I don't think we had uh, three good chances right. in the third period, you know, so you're not going to tie the game up. You have to sort of press a little bit, but, uh, you know, naturally you'd have to change your style, but hopefully we can, you know, stay right with them, you know, tie or one goal up or one goal behind, then you don't have to change your style and, and start pressing. I don't want to wish you any bad luck, but we need a game here Tuesday night. Darren. Well, well <laughs> all I can say, like, I'm, I'm really happy that the, the series, you know, it's a, it's a hard-fought game, tough, tough game, and I'm glad we're not into a lot of the stuff we weren't in, you know, we weren't into last year. The people, I think, they enjoy good hockey weather. You know, the Flyers win or the Leafs win, especially in Canada they do, and, uh, you know, I'm glad to see it's that kind of a series. Nothing but minors after two games, so that would indicate that maybe it will stay that way. Well, it's hard to say. You know, a fight here or there is no, nothing, uh, you know, to get upset about, but... Uh, Last year, you get a little carried away. <laughs> Darrell, I want to thank you very much for stopping by here and talking with us. I know you want to get out there, and, and your throat must be awful dry here. You know, get a couple of the bubblies in you after the game here. And
we'll see you up in Toronto and good luck in the rest right, of the series. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. Well, I'm going on out there, Daryl. Yeah, I get back there and get the shower. <laughs> Hugh, I, I, as we talked about it, the first uh, of the uh, of the game, uh, and Daryl saying here, I, of course, I don't think he knew the news about Barry, and I didn't uh, elaborate on it, and uh, I don't, I don't want to keep uh, bringing that up, and but I, I, I really have to think that that is probably the major factor in, in the performance of the Flyers tonight. Yeah, they were flat all the way through, I thought. Uh, they did start early enough, but uh, couldn't get it as two power play goals by Toronto gave them the 2-0 lead and that critical goal, I think, by Williams, 37 seconds into the second period. So they're down 0-2 and they go up to Toronto Friday and Sunday, and as I said, we need a game next Tuesday night for all our great PRISM subscribers. What do you want to do? Hold this? Uh, you know, I oh. need some teeth work. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just wanted you to take, did you take a look at our uh, poster that we had up I behind here and the lovely, and the good people out there on, uh, in television land had to see it too and uh, to see the world's oldest new father. Huh. After, after four boys, you know, I finally got one with indoor plumbing. I'm very pleased about that. Okay, Bob, thank you very much. On behalf of color analyst Bob Taylor, Hugh Gannon saying thank you very much for being with us. We do hope to be here on Tuesday night. Once again, the final score, Toronto 4 and Philadelphia 1. Do have a good evening. This has been a PRISM Sports Presentation.